Welcome back to DIY Finance Guy, I'm Sergey Modolevsky, and today we're going to be getting into the latest news on inflation, particularly the August Consumer Price Inflation Report out of the United States. In this video, we're going to discuss how high core consumer price index readings are going to lead to higher mortgage rates for a more extended period of time. Also, we'll discuss what the bank's expectations are for whether or not Canada will enter a recession, and we'll talk about how higher mortgage rates will impact mortgage costs, home prices, and stocks. We'll discuss much more, so let's get into it. Yesterday, the U.S. Core Consumer Price Index report for all items, not including food and energy, rose 0.6% month over month in August 2022. That's an acceleration from 0.3% in the previous month in July and above market expectations of a 0.3% increase. That means that core inflation is still growing at 7.2% per year. Those sort of rates for central bankers are unacceptable inflation levels because they're attempting to regain their public credibility. When core inflation is growing, inflation of prices is starting to take shape in all parts of the economy and everyday life. The more broad-based that inflation becomes, the more it gets entrenched in people's expectations, and as a result, it remains for a longer period of time. At their most recent meeting, central bankers advised core inflation was the most critical metric that would drive future interest rate decisions. So yesterday's numbers solidified that we're going to see more hikes throughout the rest of this year. That means more pain for households as job losses and borrowing costs are likely to mount in the months ahead, while home prices, stocks and bonds are likely to continue to see downward pressure. The Federal Reserve raised the target fund rate for the Fed funds rate by 75 basis points to 2.5 to 5% to 2.5% during its July 2022 meeting. That was the fourth consecutive interest rate hike and it pushed borrowing costs to the highest levels since 2019. Fed fund futures imply that investors are now pricing in a more than 70% chance of another 75 basis point hike in September and a 40% chance of another 200 basis points in additional hikes before the end of this year. At the start of the month, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem advised that Canada would need to push its rates into restrictive territory. That means that monetary policy would not stimulate nor weigh on the economy. The high end of that rate was 3%. Since that time, the Bank of Canada has gone ahead and delivered another 75 basis point hike in September, and that moved the overnight lending rate to 325 it's now in restrictive territory. But after the pretty terrible US inflation report on September 14th, the Bank of Canada is likely to raise interest rates over the next two meetings in October and December. That might push borrowing rates to four or four and a half percent well into restrictive territory where now it's weighing down on the economy. Please get into the comments and let me know. Do you think the Fed and the Bank of Canada will raise rates above the 4% target? As the inflation forecast changes, bank economists are releasing updated projections for how they believe the economy is going to perform. And there's a bit of a lack of consensus between them, but it's certainly one direction. Royal Bank senior economist Josh Nye released a note to his clients on Monday saying, with policymakers pledging to do what it takes to rein in inflation, we think a soft landing is becoming a distant prospect. Central banks are aware of the challenge, but only the Bank of England has been bold enough to forecast a recession. He said, for our part, we think a European downturn is already underway as a continental energy crisis deepens. Canada, the United States, and the UK are likely to see their economic contractions begin later this year or in early 2023. For his part, Scotiabank economist Jean-Francois Perrault believes that a global recession is inevitable. COVID management measures in China, combined with the impact of inclement weather and the weakness in the residential construction sector, point to the weakest growth observed since 1980. We all know what happened to home prices over that period. That excludes 2020, where the economy had locked down due to COVID. In Europe, the lagged impact of higher commodity prices, the war in Ukraine, heat waves, and rising interest rates are pushing Europe's economy into recession. With these major economic powers registering very weak economic performance, a global recession is assured. In addition, he believes that the Federal Bank and the Bank of Canada are nearing the end of their policy rate tightening cycles. 
He expects the Bank of Canada is going to stop tightening after its policy rate reaches 3.75% in October and forecasts that the Fed will stop raising its target rate once it reaches 3.5% in November. Keep in mind, we're already at 3.25% and this note came out prior to yesterday's core inflation report out of the US. They anticipate that policy rates will remain unchanged throughout 2023. That means that even after central banks stop hiking, they're still going to leave rates unchanged throughout all of 2023. Bank economists now have a sort of growing consensus that a global recession is inevitable, with central banks getting deep into restrictive territory by the end of this year. Wages continue to grow, the labor market is already softening. We've had three consecutive months of job losses totaling somewhere around 140,000 jobs. And household disposable income is falling because of higher borrowing costs. By the way, if you're enjoying this content that I make on this channel and you'd like to support me, please hit that like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of these videos in the future. Let's get back into it. With the most recent Bank of Canada increase of 75 basis points, the overnight rate is now 3.25%. These increases affect every mortgage borrower with an adjustable, variable, or home line of credit product. This fifth increase in 2022 has now pushed a segment of variable rate mortgage holders into a trigger rate meaning the bank is gonna demand a larger payment so that the mortgage doesn't go into a negative amortization. We will undoubtedly see at least one more interest rate hike of 75 basis points or two hikes totaling 75 basis points. And that's gonna push payments and qualifying rates higher for anyone not holding a fixed rate mortgage. As I discussed in a previous video that I'll link above, alternative lending and private mortgage rates continue to rise. Many of these mortgage holders uh, keep mortgages with lenders like Home Trust, Equitable Bank, Optimum, and others in the same spectrum, and others will be coming due in the months ahead. They're going to face borrowing costs of 7 plus percent at renewal. They will have seen a significant decline in their property's equity due to falling prices. It's going to leave them with a very difficult decision about whether to renew their mortgage or sell the property. Buyers are likely to continue to remain on the sidelines even as active listings grow because while prices have fallen, homes have become less affordable due to interest rate increases and borrowing capacity is squeezed due to higher qualifying rates. Housing affordability actually reached its lowest level in 41 years in the second quarter of 2022 and upward pressure on rates through the remainder of this year is not going to offset the declines that we've seen in property values over these last two quarters. Falling prices will likely continue through the end of this year as interest borrowing rates and qualifying rates will increase again in October. If you're considering selling your home but you're waiting for buyer demand to return, you might be up the creek without a paddle in the short term. Central Bank and charter bank economies, economists have advised that even after rates peak, they might remain at peak levels throughout 2023. If you know that you intend to sell your property in the short term, you might consider doing so sooner rather than later. Job losses are slowly starting to mount, and you don't want to find yourself in a position where you have to sell out of complete desperation because you've lost your primary source of income. Household wealth is also deteriorating quickly, with Canadian wealth falling by 6.1% in the second quarter of this year, marking the first decline since the first quarter of 2020, and the steepest drop since data tracking began back in 1990. Stock markets got obliterated after yesterday's high core inflation report out of the US. The report has changed the forecast for borrowing rates. It may be a catalyst for a much more significant stock market decline in the months ahead as interest rates continue to march higher and the banks communicate that they're going to remain there for longer. Corporate earnings may also finally take a step back as consumers slow their spending. Debt growth continues to outpace income gains, leading to an uptick in the debt to disposable income ratio. People have less cash on hand. I want to remind you, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This channel aims to provide you with a lot of aggregated information from really well informed sources so that you can make a more informed decision about how to manage your mortgage, real estate and investments. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That's so important for getting this content out to more people. You helped me grow this channel and I really appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.